So here's what, here's what happened. I downloaded the Leviathan DLC for Mass Effect. Probably a lot of you have. You know, it was 800 Microsoft points, which is like 10 bucks. I downloaded it, I beat it, and I hated it. It was terrible. It was a terrible piece of DLC. If I could have my money back, I would. And it's definitely going to make me speculate about whether or not I'm going to buy any more DLC. Now, this is coming from a guy who bought every single piece of, D of DLC for Mass Effect 1 and 2. And I was just, you know, drooling over all of them. I was, you know, pretty excited about this one. And, you know, it's kind of a letdown. And after I was done with it, I really couldn't believe it was over. And I was staring at my screen. And then I'm like, you know... This whole game was kind of a letdown. And I want to kind of talk about why. I think that Mass Effect 3 was easily the worst game of the three. And I mean, it's worse than one. You know, and I mean, not the, not the gameplay. The gameplay's tight in 3. But it just doesn't have what, you know, Mass Effect 1 had such a great story, and so it was so interesting to play. Like, everything was new, and it really felt, like, huge. And then Mass Effect 2 had, you know, less of a story. It felt a lot more closed, but the gameplay was just super slick in 2. It was just perfect. And then in 3, you know, the gameplay is still really good, but now it's like you're used to it, and nothing new is really brought in, and the story just isn't isn't there. And I think that, you know, it's just the gameplay isn't as fun. Every mission kind of feels the same, and, the you know, partially it's multiplayer's fault. Because, you know, you pl I played multiplayer, I, pr I probably logged like 200 hours playing multiplayer, and then you play the enemy, you, you, f you get so good at fighting the enemies, it gets kind of mechanical to deal with it. It starts being, you know, more of a grind. So then when I go to the single player game, I've just fought, you know, Cerberus and the Reapers so many times that it, I'm like, I, I just want to get through to see the cutscenes, pretty much. Like, the, the combat itself isn't that fun, because you kind of, it's kind of played out, you know? And that, and that, I think, multiplayer, I don't want to say it's a mistake, but it should have been different from the single player. Or reverse that. Single player should have been different from the multiplayer. And by that I mean, there should be more fucking enemies in single player. So let me get into it. Let me get into it a little bit. Uh, my biggest gripe with Mass Effect 3 is how there's exactly three enemy factions. Cerberus, Reapers, and Geth. And to be real, Geth are hardly in it. The Geth part of the game is like is like three missions, and you fight Geth three. You know, like it's, it's very small. It should have been bigger. So, for you know, you're playing the game for say 25 hours. Probably 20 of those hours, you're fighting Cerberus and Reapers. And you know, the enemies within those factions are, are interesting. The turret guys are interesting. Phantoms are interesting. They kind of do different stuff. They're not just like running gunners. But you, it gets tired. You get old. You, it gets old. And then you're killing the same old Cerberus guys every fucking mission with no variety. There's no variety. And nothing ever happens. You don't fight any Krogan. You don't fight any Vorcha. You, you hardly, I mean, you fight some of those big mechs, but, you know, where's the robots? Give me some fucking Varen. Give me some, you know, you, you don't fight anything except for these two factions with a cameo from the Geth. You know, like, just to compare, let's look at Mass Effect 2. You had the Eclipse which were, the, like, the biotic kind of guys, and they were, you know, they felt different from the Blue Suns, which had a lot of mechs and rocket launchers. The Vorcha were, you know, all the Krogans and, and, and the, I mean, the, the Blood Pack, were Krogans and Vorcha, and they had, you know, armor, they had flamethrower guys, and they regenerated their health. They felt like a different faction. Then you fight the Geth, and you actually fought a lot of Geth in that game, you know, a lot more, and they felt, you know, they had cloak guys and the big, you know, the big dudes and the huge guys. That was all really cool. Then you fought the, you know, uh, what are they, the, the collectors. And then just for fun, they threw in some Varen. You know, they had some boss fights. They had some of those big armatures, the big Geth dudes. It was a ton of different enemies in there. And just, you know, the, you fight the helicopters. You fight the flying helicopters. Then, you, then with DLC, they introduced the dudes with the, with the flashbang grenades, which also kind of felt different. That's a lot. That's a lot of enemy types. And then, you know, with, with, because the multiplayer wasn't there, you, you couldn't really play those fights so many times that they got tired, and that game just feels fresh whenever you play it. Then you go to Mass Effect 3, and they really took a step back. I mean, there's there could have easily been Varen in this game. There could have been a, a, um, Rachni. There could have been in here. I mean, there for sure could have been some, like, blood pack bands that are 
you know, like, I understand you're all trying to band together, but there's still going to be some gangs that are just out for out for violence. Let, let's fight some of them for a while, you know? I want to fight some Krogans. What the hell's going on? So, you know, it's, it's kind of it's kind of lame. The whole game, I'm waiting for, like, more bad guys. And then the first, I, I remember vividly, the first time I beat the game, I, I could feel that I was getting close. And I'm like, yeah, there really aren't any, like, enemy types in this game. That's all. Even, that was even before I played multiplayer very much. I, was, I wanted to beat the game first. And then another thing, which is, you know, still, lack of variety. There's no mini-games. There isn't a single fucking mini-game. And I know that, you know, the, the, the bypassing and hacking from Mass Effect 2 and, like, planet scanning, I would call those mini-games. And I think they weren't done perfectly in Mass Effect 2, and they were pretty, like, lame. And about my, my eighth, you know, playthrough, I didn't even do them anymore. But I think they're necessary. I think you need those to kind of break the action up. Because, you know, now in 3, you walk up to a door and you, like, put your hand on it, and, like, that shit starts going around, uh, and you're, like, holding it. It's like, just open the fucking door then. If, if there's no game to it, like, what's the fucking animation for? Like, I'm waiting? I'm just waiting for the door to open, watching this thing spin around? Waiting is not a very fun game, is it? I mean, if you're gonna let me, like, do something like that, then let me play some kind of a spinning game where I'm doing some kind of a, you know, matching the... There's tons of... I mean, there's a million games that do, like, lockpicking type games. Let's do one of those. I didn't even... I like the hacking. And I think they could have gone another level with it. Because, you know, the way they had it is... You go to a safe, you hack it. It's almost impossible to fail. And, and then if you hack it, you get, the, you get the safe. Well, they should have taken it one step further and made it time-based, where if you beat it quickly, you get more. So let's say that there's 10,000 credits in a safe. It starts, like, getting erased or locked away as you're hacking, and then if you hack it out, you know, too long, then you only get 5,000 credits instead of 10,000. So there's, like, a little tension there. That would have added a lot more fun to it. You know, and same with planet scanning. I think that could have been, like, a much funner game. Uh... You know, like, you, maybe you can only, I don't know, maybe you can only shoot so many probes per planet, so you had, like, pick which plots to shoot it at, so you really had a min-max, like, what, re, you know, whatever. There's there's definitely ways to do it, I can think of them, but it's not about Mass Effect 2. In 3, there's nothing that breaks up your, your, your run and gunning. You just, you only fight and talk in this game. And, you know, at first I kind of liked how smooth that was. But as the more the more I was playing it, I'm like, yeah, you know, there really needs to be something else. Like, there needs to be some kind of a, even a stupid arcade game, like in the in the Normandy to play, something to break it up a little. There needs to be more in an RPG. When you're playing for thirty hours, you need to vary the gameplay. And if you're not going to vary it with enemies, and you're not really going to vary it enough enough with with like different weapons and guns, you got to put something in, you know. And there were some parts where you're like on a shot a gun shooting like. The turret parts, I guess you can consider a minigame where you're on the turret, but that minigame sucks. It needs to be a better one, you know? And then, you know, there was a trend in Mass Effect 2 that they had a lot of DLCs. They had Overlord, Overlord, they had Arrival, they had the Shadow Broker DLC. Those were all hard-hitting, awesome DLCs. They were amazing. And then, you know, they had uh, Kasumi, which was awesome too, but, you know, Kasumi, she had a new character... Nothing much was added other than her, but in uh, Shadow Broker, that was a that that DLC was that's how you fucking do it. That's how you do downloadable content. It was incredible. They had you know you get Liara to play with. That was sweet. You get two boss fights. You fight Vizier and you fight the the, the the fucking monster. That was amazing. You do the whole airplane part. So much variety is added there. It was just it felt so refreshing, and it was added like you know after toward the tail end of, of Mass Effect Two. I really thought they, that's the way the game should have been the whole time. With lots of boss fights, lots of chase scenes, and like, you know, different different things like that. It was great to let you play with Liara for a while. And then, oh, before that, Overload also had, you know, the tank part where you're exploring, like, a kind of a bigger area, and the mission is, like, segmented into mini-missions, and you're driving around, and you you fight the you the computer part where it's all hologram and shit. You fight the, the, the Wizard of Oz head with the, the things, it's all, it's all a boss fight, it was, it was cool, it, was, it had a lot of variety, and then even in Arrival, you had that thing survive for, you know, three minutes in that room, and the whole mission was solo, and there was actually a stealth element to it, they added a lot of new shit in these DLCs, and I thought that was a great trend, and I thought that was, like, foreshadowing to what Mass Effect 3 was going to be like, I'm like, man, this Mass Effect 3 is going to be fucking awesome, there's going to be all these cool boss fights, all these cool, like, stealth parts, you know, and they added the whole, like, insta-kill thing. I thought it was going to add stealth as a big element in this game. And they d did it all. 
there's no stealth at all in the game. I mean, you pretty much run up to a railing and then kill a guy. And there's not stealth. You don't ever sneak around. Because as soon as you kill a dude, they all know. And they all attack you. There's no boss fights. You fight the Reaper that one time. And that's it. There isn't even a fucking boss fight at the end of the game. You just fight the one Reaper. That's the only boss fight. And you don't do any, you know, different driving parts. There's no flying parts. It's... It's just run and gun, and, and all the DLC, all the trends they built that were so positive and so well received, they just didn't even give a shit. It's like a whole different development company made the third game, and had no idea what one and two had in it. What? The, what why take out all this fun shit you added in? It's so stupid. And then another thing, you get your team, okay? And there's those eight guys, and this is the third game. You, you ever watch, you remember the last episode of Seinfeld? You ever watch that where it was like a court case, and they just flash back to like a thousand different episodes? People like that. People like the kind of the, the, the retrospective look at your whole series and getting that little touchy feeling, t- touching feeling with everybody. And they had plenty of opportunities to do that here. And here's how: you you, you get into a, a mission with like Jacob. You know that mission of Jacob where you're saving those scientists. Jacob is there fighting, and you're there fighting, and he's never on your team. Put Jacob on my team only for that one mission. So when you're doing Jacob's mission. You're like, okay, Liar, okay, Tali, you go back to the ship. Garrus and Jacob and me are going to take care of this. And then, like, as a little throwback to being a team, you and Jacob do it. And you give Jacob some cool powers that only he gets, you know, and you give him some, you know, whatever, and some cool, unique dialogue, and put him on your team as a teammate, just for that one mission. And then you get Grunt for the other mission. Put Grunt on your team. You know, you played with these people in Rex. What a great throwback that would be to go all the way back to Mass Effect 1 and put Rex on your team for one mission. And you and Rex get serious when you're rescuing the fucking female from the Solarians. And Rex is, like, guarding the ship? You waste Rex's cameo by having him guard the fucking ship? Put him on my team! What the fuck are you thinking? Give him some cool fucking Vanguard powers, put him on your team for one mission! How great would that be for you to be able to, like, connect with everybody again? One mission at a time. And have that one little touching moment where you really help them complete their life, you know? Instead, they're always fucking standing around at the end of your radio talking to you and never actually playing with you. It's so stupid. And then in Shadow Broker, they did exactly that with Liara. Liara's in the game, and you're like, man, I wish you could be on my team. Come join me. You ask her. And then they let you play with her that one mission. And it was so rewarding to do that. And then in 3, you could do it with every fucking character. Zaid and Kasumi and Jacob and Miranda and everybody. And they just shit the bed completely and let you do it with anybody. How disappointing. You know, like about by by the fourth cameo that I didn't get to use... It really started... My heart started sinking. I'm like, man, all these people who aren't on my fucking team, like Thane, and and all those guys that get... They're in the fucking game. They're with you. They're in the same mission with you, but they're, like, over in the other room off camera. And I'm playing with this fucking douchebag, you know, and and this fucking douchebag, and I'm not getting... I don't get Rex on my team? That's fucking stupid, man. That was dumb. So then, anyway, back back to the Leviathan... I'm gonna spoil. I'm, I'm, there's spoilers here. I'm assuming you've wa- you, you don't give a shit. Uh, you do this mission where you know it, they they send you to all these different kind of planets to find these artifacts, and it was cool. You go to cool missions, and especially the one that was like on some weird red planet where you're climbing all over these metal things like box cars or something. It was cool, but once again, you're only fighting Cerberus and the Reapers the whole time. You don't get anything new. And even though, like, you're looking for a big giant Reaper killer, like a big Reaper killer, and you, t- you you ride a mech, and you take the mech underwater, there's no any variety. There's no variety. I thought for sure when I'm, the mech is falling underwater, I'd have to, like, at least, like, fend off from some, like, weird underwater monsters, and I gotta, like, be underwater shooting shit really slow and sluggish. I was hoping. No, nothing like that. You don't even get to fucking walk around underwater. You walk for, like, ten feet. And then you're like, you, you get cutscene. The, the DLC, here's the, the, here's what DLC did. It gave you two extra hours of the exact same shit that Mass Effect 3 is. And it's a good game, and, and, it's, and the game is pretty fun, but I'm not going to pay $10 for two hours of more of the same shit that does nothing for the story at all. What do you get when you're, when you're done with Leviathan? Like fucking 10 more readiness rating for these... Or you, you get the fucking creators or whatever, what are they called? The, 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 I forgot what they're even fucking called. Like the first race that built everything. The Gather... I, I forgot. Whatever. They made the Reapers. You get them on your team, and they're worth like 20 fucking points. Like, who cares? Give me a fucking boss 
fight. That's what I want, you know? I don't want new weapons anymore. They're fine, but give me some variety of gameplay. Now when the next DLC comes out, I'm not even sure I'm going to buy it. I mean, I probably will, because I'm hopeful, but if it's just the same, if it's two more hours of fighting Cerberus, I can do that for free online already. You know, I get my uh, the, the, the multiplayer already covers that whole, like, fighting Cerberus for infinite hours. It's boring. At least get some kind of a, you know, I don't know, I don't know what. They really, what they, it's too late now probably, but they really need to add more factions. You need to be able to fight more shit. Or fight more than one faction at a time. You know, like, let's fight a simulated, you know, Geth. Let's fight, you know, Geth under the influence of the Reapers, and they're, like, different than the regular Geth. I don't know, but... I mean, it's still a great game. I've beaten it twice. I'll probably beat it again. It's one of the few, one of the only games I play. I play probably three games right now, and Mass Effect 3 is one of them. But it's definitely the weakest one. And it did not have to be the weakest one. I think that it's, it's almost like they laid off too much of Mass Effect 2's staff. And nobody was like, nobody had that connection to say, you know what really worked here? Let's continue doing that here. Because it, it just, it feels so different. And a lot of stuff feels like it's missing. You know, they're missing a lot of shit. And it was really disappointing for me. And this DLC really fucking buried the hatchet. I was hoping the DLC would fill some of the, some of the gaps. But this isn't a very good trend. I'm, I'm a little bit frightened.